Hey everyone, Korzik here. Welcome to another episode of Let's Play East 1 2 Chronicles Plus for the PC. In the first episode, we learned that Adol washed ashore in a country known as Asteria, which has been experiencing a fair number of problems recently. The first of these problems is the appearance of what they're calling the Stormwall Barrier. What that is, is it's a giant barrier storms surrounding the entire country and what that means is that no ships can enter or leave. Everyone is essentially trapped here. Anyone that does try to enter or leave the country inevitably gets shipwrecked. Adel himself came here via ship, he was also shipwrecked. But he somehow survived, despite a close call with a monster. Sarah the fortune teller learns of these events and thinks that Adol might perhaps be the person she is looking for. Turns out that she wants us to look for the books of Ys. Apparently they detail the history of the land. And the reason she wants us to find these is because she thinks that by reading them they might offer a clue as to the source of the recent troubles in the land. The second problem that's been plaguing this area is the appearance of monsters six months ago, the same time the storm wall showed up. So are the two events related? The third problem is there have been numerous burglaries throughout the land recently, mostly of silver items. Most people seem to suspect the thieves residing up in the mountains and one of the items that was stolen was Zepic's Charm of Protection, the Silver Bell. The mayor wants us to try to negotiate it back from the thieves because the bell is rumored to have the power to repel monsters. So without it, Zepic is kind of screwed. So Barbado has the militia to help protect them, Manea has walls around their city, but Zepic has only the Silver Bell, and it's just been stolen. So, and they're elderly people at that, so they're in hot water. So, the mayor asks us to negotiate it from the thieves. We tried to do so, but the thieves say they didn't do it. That they themselves had actually been stolen from. He offers us to search his place if we don't believe him. We did. We didn't find any silver items there. So if not the thieves, then who did steal all the stuff? There have been rumors of a mysterious black-caped man roaming throughout the area, so might he somehow be responsible? Anyways, Sarah told us that the first book of East could be found in the shrine. I've already explored the top level. Killed a wizard boss, but so far, no books of East. Uh, passage to the lower levels did open up, so let's get to exploring that. First, I should point out that I only have the first level armor and shield here. This will pose a bit of an issue for me because with only the first level armor, I die in two hits down here. So I need to be really careful. I did pick up this ruby on the top floor of the shrine. If I wanted to, I could sell it to Pim and Minea for 1200 gold or 1320 if I bartered. But uh, that wouldn't be enough to get me a second level piece of armor. The second level armors cost 2,000 gold each, selling the ruby would not get me quite enough. So I am going to continue exploring, there is another item down here we can sell, but for now I just need to play safe. Off to the right here we have a couple of prison cells. They are locked because apparently there are people inside them. 
We don't have the key, so we can't do anything yet. Um, there's also a treasure chest in the southeastern corner, but again, it is also locked. So, not much we can do on this floor except to head down to the next level. The stairs are in the southwestern corner here. On this floor, be very careful because right around here, there's usually this bug enemy. If you're not paying attention, oh boy. He can kill you pretty easily. And I am actually surprised I only took 10 damage. Usually. Yeah, that's weird. Usually I do a lot more than that. Oh, I know why. I leveled up. So, usually I'd be at level 4 at this point, and I hit level 5, 1600 experience. Anyways, I went into this room here, it's down at the bottom, you can see two silver wing statues outside of it. Go in there and open up the treasure chest here. There's a blue flaming skull enemy. When you open the chest, it uh, warps into more enemies, so we need to be careful leaving this room. Since I am level 5 with the longsword, I could kill these guys, but they are pretty dangerous. I'm not going to bother with them. I'm just going to run out. Now, I did get the prison key from that chest. That's all we need at the moment, but I'm going to explore a little bit more and grab a couple other items. This room here, one silver statue outside, go in there, and in this corridor here. Be careful, there's usually a blue flaming skull guy in here. This chest is partially opened, and inside it has the treasure box key. We can now open all of those locked chests we've been seeing. One of these chests is in this corridor off to the left here, and down here in this room. It contains a silver bell. So maybe the thieves were telling the truth. Maybe they didn't steal it. Now I suppose you could argue that uh, they stole it and decided to hide it down here. But think about it. This place is infested with monsters. Why would they hide it down here with monsters running around? It doesn't make any sense. So, anyways, we have the treasure box key and the silver bell. I am going to head back up now and open up those prison cells. Uh, heading back up, be careful of these bug enemies I like to troll. And these enemies like to clog up the corridors here, so be careful of them too. Oh boy. Now that I'm level 5, they're not too much danger to me, but I just want to play it safe anyways. So, well, actually I'm going to go get the treasure chest down in the southeastern corner here. It contains a necklace. We can sell this to Pim as well. This will only get us 500 gold or 550 if we bartered for it. Anyways, the prison cells, the one on the left is basically useless, and I am going to kill him before he causes too much trouble. The prison cell on the left only has this enemy, it's called a looter. Only thing you can really do is kill it. Uh, yeah, they're called looters, so I like to theorize that uh, it was locked up because it stole something it should have, and so... He got sent to jail for it. Anyway, the cell we want is the right cell. It has a young lady inside of it. And if you think about it, why is someone down here? Because how did we get down here? We used Sarah's crystal. That's how we were able to use the statues to warp. So how did she get in here then? A man in a black cape. Hmm. 
says he seems to control the movements of the monsters. That is obviously not good. She says forget about her. Don't do it. Uh, you actually have to save her at some point. I recommend taking her with you now because if you do it now, you get to 500 experience bonus. If you come back for her later, and as I said, you do have to come back for her, uh, you don't get any experience. The latest you can come back for is after killing the second boss further in the shrine here, and so yeah, you don't get extra experience that way. And we have to do it anyway, so best to do it right now. If you do tell her he'll come back later, she will give you the item in the chest. But uh, saving her right away, she for some reason doesn't give it to you, so you have to open it yourself. It contains the Mask of Eyes. She says the man in the black cape put that in here with her. So, if you look off to the left, you can see we have Fina stats listed. Yep. We are in the middle of an escort mission. So in addition to keeping ourselves alive, we have to protect Fina as well. If Fina dies, then it's game over. You'll want to keep her close to you because the monsters have a tendency to go after her. And also because if she is too far away from you, then when you transition to another screen, she might not follow. So... Oh, they tried to sneak up on her. We obviously can't take her exploring in the shrine with us because that's too dangerous. So you'll want to take her. Oh man. You'll want to take her out of here. Um, I do have the wing. This allows us to warp to Manea. But it doesn't have the power to transport two people. We have to walk. So, the closest place is Zepic. Let's take her there. Now, I don't think I mentioned this before, but uh, this top level of the shrine, you can stand still to get healed. Fina can do the same as long as she's standing still, so if you need to recover, he can do that. I'm just gonna let Fina get recovered. Okay. So, back chart through here. If you remember, there was a chest up in the southwestern corner up here, so I'm going to go grab that real quick. It contains the shield ring. The shield ring, as you can probably guess, reduces the damage you take by half. There are a few equipment rings like this throughout the game. They are pretty useful, but they do not function during boss battles. So, the shield ring, for instance, it lets me take half damage from normal enemies, but if I wore it during a boss battle, the boss would do the same damage to me regardless. Anyways, let's get out of here. Again, be sure to kill the enemies before they get to Fina. There is some side stuff you can do with Fina. I'm not going to show it off this video. I'll do it in the bonus video. But yeah, just take her to Zepic. And when you enter, she suddenly collapses. So, we take her to Jebba's. <coughs> yeah. The inner part of the shrine is sealed. We were only able to explore it because of Sarah's crystal. So how did monsters get there, and how did Fina get there? Uh, 
Okay, so at this point you can finish up the shrine. But I'm not going to do that just yet. I'm going to make a couple of detours. The first of these is returning the silver bell to the mayor. Nope, it was not the thieves. Indeed, why would it have been there? So, for your trouble, he gives you another equipment ring. The power ring. As you can probably guess, this ring doubles your damage output. Uh, I do want to point out the power ring's description says it doubles your strength. That's not quite accurate because strength and damage in this game are two different things. Uh, so, for instance, the enemies in the mine. We can't damage them yet. Equipping the power ring would not change that fact. But the enemies that you can damage, it will double your damage output. I'm going to keep the shield ring equipped for now. I think it's better. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is I am going to work back to Manea. I'm going to sell off the ruby and necklace to Pim and buy another piece of armor. And I'm also going to buy a wing. I should mention that uh, if you're playing the eternal version of the game, the wing and mirror prices are significantly higher. So the wing costs 200 gold in this version, in the eternal version it costs 2,000 gold. Quite an increase. Uh, the mirror costs 500 gold in this version, 1,000 in eternal. So I will sell him the ruby. I don't really need to sell him the necklace, but why not? There's no other use for it. 1,200 gold for this. But only 500 gold for the necklace. Not as valuable. And again, you can barter for a little bit more gold, but it's not really helpful. Did I buy a wing? Yes, I did. It's not particularly helpful. I can only buy one second level armor, but that's all I really need anyway, so... Um, I am going to buy a body armor. As far as a shield, we'll come across a pretty high-end one in a little bit. So, we don't have enough money for the reflex. It costs 5,000 gold, so plate mail it is. 2,000. Let's make sure I equip this. And that will help me survive a little bit easier down in the shrine. It still will be a little bit painful, but uh, that'll make things a little easier at least. So, let's head back to the shrine. If you want to, after rescuing Fina, you can head to Port Barbado, talk with Sloth, and he will give you a free Tawar, the third level sword. Uh, that does help a little bit, but as far as defeating the boss in the shrine, you need to be both you need to be the same level with the longsword and Talwar, so I'm not going to bother. You need to be level 7 to do any extra damage with those two weapons. I'll only be getting to level 6 because level 7 requires 6400 experience and that's a bit of a grind I don't want to do right now. Uh, you can go to the mine right now if you wanted to. Uh, I do have the uh, treasure box key. All the chests in the mine are locked, but since we have the treasure box key, we could head over here to Raston Mine. Um, inside the mine are... there's a high-end armor, and there are a couple items you can use to get a pretty high-end sword as well. 
And if you had that sword, you could do the shrine boss at level 6. It would, those items would just make the shrine a breeze. But, uh, we can't really damage the enemies there right now. We're technically not supposed to be there, so we'd have to avoid the enemies and Story-wise, we're supposed to be in the shrine anyway, so I'm just gonna go back to the shrine. I will kill these enemies just for what little experience they do give me. So, back to Zepic. I should point out, um, now that we uh, return the silver bell to the mayor, he will heal you for free if you talk to him now. Uh, and re-entering the village after dropping off Fina. Fina is now awake, so be sure to talk to her. Uh, you do need to check in on her at various points in the game in order to enter the game's final dungeon. You don't have to do this now, but uh, the game kind of expects you to. Otherwise, if you do all of these events with Fina at once, they it's a little confusing, so check in on her when you can, in Jebba too. You'll want to talk to Fina again. This is needed to progress the story. story with Fina, I mean. So, yeah. She can only remember her own name. She doesn't know who she is. She doesn't know why she's in prison there. She only remembers that she was and that the man in the black cape put her there. Jebba again if you want to. And with that, I will head back to the shrine. Oh, and this guy, I don't remember if I did it before or not, but uh, we talked with the thieves. If you remember, he thinks the thieves weren't, aren't really bad people because they saved him once. So, that may be true. Doesn't seem like they sold the Silver Bell after all. So, now we will continue exploring the floor we were on earlier. The floor with the prison key and treasure box key. These enemies, now that we have a second level piece of armor, are not as bad. The bugs are... They still deal a bit of damage if you're not careful. I'm just gonna avoid it. This one... Yeah, I'll kill him. The bugs, I think, do a little bit more damage, and so do these blue skull guys, but they are... You can deal with them now without too much issue. Stairs are in the southeastern corner. This guy's being a total troll about it now. <laughs> okay, so down here you'll want to head to the northwestern corner. And there's a treasure chest here contains the ivory key. If we didn't have the treasure box key, the chest down here would be locked. So the ivory key and one other is needed to reach the second boss. I'm just gonna let these guys come in the corridor. See if I had the tower here these guys would go down quicker, but I don't. But uh, that's not a big deal. 
I am level 6 now, 3200 experience. Level 7 again is, uh. Oh boy. Level 7 is 6400 experience. So I'm not gonna bother reaching that, it's too much grinding for me. These lion guys are really dangerous. Uh, this is another warp statue, this gold one. Uh, we'll get back to this shortly, but for now I am going to... Yeah! Whew. There is another one over here I want to enter first. Go into this room, be careful of this guy. And these guys are the strongest ones down here. I can damage them at level 6 with the long sword, but they pose a bit of an issue. So here we have the silver shield. Remember that guy in Manea's clinic said he was attacked in his own home? His silver shield was stolen? This is his. It's a pretty high-end shield, too. Uh, equipping this will definitely help your survival chances. Uh, you still need to be careful of those lion guys and those guys with the sword that we just saw. Um, yeah, so like the silver bell, the silver shield was down here. Wasn't the thieves after all, apparently. To leave, you just use this swarp statue here. I am going to save my game, because when you... Yeah, that happens. That guy is usually in the way, he's a troll. Get away from me! Okay, you guys are dying. Okay. Use this warp statue, you go into this room, there's usually this enemy here is usually waiting right in the doorway for you. For some reason he wasn't this time. In here, if you want it, there's a sorted enemy. He takes a while to kill. Having the tower would make it go a bit quicker, but just, I don't really care. Uh, this chest contains a heal potion. So if we need to get healed up down here, this is the only way to do so. Now, I don't know if you can see it real well, but uh, right in front of me, there's a little bit of an odd wall. You can see a very faint outline of a doorway arch. And this is where the Mask of Eyes comes into play. Equip it, but suddenly you can't see anything. So I just wanted the enemy out of the corridor because he likes to be right in your way. So why did I equip the Mask of Eyes? Because that reveals a doorway, a hidden passage. But with the Mask of Eyes on, you can't see enemies, and that one enemy I just killed will likely be waiting for you right away, so... Yeah. Take it off so you can see who you're fighting. <laughs> Go in here. Um, this warp statue, we'll get to that just in a little bit here, but for now... Come on. For now, go down here. Through these rooms and to this warp statue. Up through this corridor, it's another chest with a key in it. This is also needed to reach the boss. But yeah, these narrow corridors you want to be really careful around because the enemies clog them up and yeah, they can do a bit of damage to you. These guys are the strongest in the area, so you need to approach them with caution. 
this guy should be almost dead. Okay. Leave the room, and when you do, this guy is usually in the way, so be careful of that. And now we can go to this warp statue over here. I'm gonna save my game or I might die shortly here. Okay. So, through here, looks like this area is actually a bit flooded. So, head off to the left here, through this corridor. These doors are locked if you don't have the right key, marble key for this door. A terrifying bloodlust from within. Translation, there's a boss ahead. And the ivory key for this door. So, save your game. Um, this mural, I guess you would call it. Like You can see something embedded in the wall there. That's the boss. Uh, I should have mentioned this before, but uh, for bosses you cannot use heal potions in the middle of them, so if you want to get healed do it before you activate the boss fight, because once you activate the boss fight, it's a fight to the death. Uh, this boss is not too bad. He's probably the easiest boss in the game. I feel somewhat comfortable uh, doing him without a potion. As I mentioned, you need to be level 7 to do any extra damage to this guy. I am only level 6, so he is going to take 100 hits. Might seem like a lot, but it's uh, not really that bad. Um, this boss just chases you around the room in circles, so do somewhat tight circles yourself, and don't aim for his head. Aim for any other body part, and that's how you damage him. I should mention some users have a problem with uh, this boss moving way too fast. Um, to make him move normally, you... Uh, where is it? There's an option that lets you display the frames per second. That might be in the game's configuration before you boot up the game. But you'll want to make sure that your refresh rate is 60 hertz and that the game is running at 60 FPS. If it runs higher, like 144 FPS or something like that, then this boss will be pretty much impossible. So, be sure you're using the correct settings. So, I know this boss is kind of slow at this level, but he's easy. I don't think it's much of a problem. So, that was that boss. Really simple, in my opinion. Um, let me see, I feel like I'm forgetting to say something about him. If you have uh, the 4th level sword, you can beat him at level 6 reasonably well. Uh, I obviously don't have that yet, but Oh, right. Uh, in addition to making sure your refresh rate and your uh, and that you're playing at 60 FPS, you might also want to turn the V-Sync option in your graphics card on. That supposedly also helps make the boss not move so fast. I personally have never had these issues, but that's just what I hear on how to correct them if you do, so, yeah. Uh, so after the boss, you can see the wall's cracked here. Examine it. The wall crumbles away. 
and there's a chest. It contains the Book of Ys. Now, after getting the Book of Ys, if you haven't rescued Fina yet, you will have to do so. Otherwise, the game will not let you leave, it won't even let you warp out, so you'll need to take care of that. I've already done so, so I am going to leave. I will warp out of here. We found the Book of East, so let's go show it to Sarah. Hmm, where is she? Hey, where's Sarah at? Yep, that's me. She was murdered. That is not good news at all. So he talked to this guy. You get another book of ease. Apparently, Sarah had been planning to give it to us. Yep, she predicted her own death. Adel abandoned mine at Raston. So, it would seem she wants us to explore there. Will we find another book at East there? Uh, anyways, that is all I am going to do for this episode. I will do a bonus episode. Um, I think I will try to release both the main episode and the bonus episodes at the same time. Just that the bonus episodes uh, require a little bit of editing on my part, so it's kind of a pain, but yeah. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you for watching.